Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So, I finally got the phone call uh, to go and pick up my radiator, it was done. So, I went and got it um, I went and got it yesterday, so it's be a few days ago from when you when you see this video. But yeah, I went I went last night and I picked it up. I don't like sending anything out to anybody. So, I'm always a bit nervous when I go and pick things up because it is very rare I do send anything out and I, I was very nervous going to pick it up because I knew in my head, although I wasn't able to do it, what he's done. Um, I know in my head exactly how I'd want it to look. Um, so yeah, going to pick it up, I was really nervous because I'm thinking, God, I hope it looks as nice as what I want. I hope he's done everything I want him to do. Well, guys, I couldn't have asked for a nicer job. He's done everything as I wanted. It's spot on. Um, there you go. Don't know if you can see that. The weld is put up there. Because the, the, the top and he's recorded it basically. Sorry. He's recorded it basically. So that's the original top, that's the original bottom. Um, and what he's done it, the original ones, these top and bottom had all, loads of fingers that folded round all around there, around the car. Now, obviously, I knew he wasn't going to be able to unpeel all those fingers and redo that. I knew he was going to have to weld it along there. But you see some of these radio uh, radiators, sorry, on eBay and stuff that people have fabricated, and where they're welded, like it's all rippled. They've got welds on like the size of my thumb running around, and they're all just and yeah, they're not, they're not expensive, hundred, two hundred quid. They're not, you know, they're not expensive, but they look messy. And because I'm wanting to try and get this as concourse as I can as I keep saying I didn't want a great big thick weld around here and it all distorted and a new top make a new bottom but I knew it'd have trouble I knew I knew it'd be difficult because like you said the original top and bottom are so thin they're old it's probably made of crappy aluminium as well but I've got to be honest guys when I got there and he showed me it I was absolutely over the moon I'll put a link to his website at the bottom for you guys and it's called Bennett Revival Fabrications so I did say I'd give him a shout out. out. So cheers, Ben. Amazing job. So I'm going to go and take this now and I'm going to go and hang it up in the spray booth, etch it and paint it satin black and then uh, maybe tonight or tomorrow I can get it mounted on the bike. Right guys, so I've painted the radiator satin black. Got the plastic grill now on the front. So I'm going to uh, put this on the bike there we go, sorry. So you can see it there, and it's got the plastic grill on the front. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get this mounted on the bike so it's out of the way because it's gonna get damaged here. Um, I've got a few other jobs I want to do before I put this on actually at the moment, like redo that thread that I said, but the longer this lays flat somewhere, the more likely I'm gonna drop something on it. So. I'll get on and stick it on the bike quickly. Right guys. I've got a few things hooked up now, so I've got the radiator on, it's full of coolant, it's got gearbox oil in it, um, I've gone around and checked everything's tight, plugs are tight and all that sort of things, I've gone around as many of the things I can check that I can, what I've had to do is, we've got it hooked up to an auxiliary fuel tank over there, now I've put a fuel ratio mix in that of uh, 20 to 1. So it said in the manual you can do it starting it up without the oil pump running because we haven't got the oil pump connected. If you look down here, the oil pump's disconnected because I need to bleed that. But before I can bleed the oil pump, I've got to do the coolant. So it says once it's up to temperature, you've got to blip it four times and check. So I've got that to do. So the oil tank's got to come off anyway. Um, so it's safe to run it on the premix up there. And I, I've used the it says anywhere between 20 to 1 and 50 to 1, so I've done it on 20 to 1. The more oil, the better, I feel. Um, some people might disagree, but we don't want any problems. Um, so, yeah, so I'm babbling. I've hooked up the old ignition barrel 
for now I've just sort of plugged it in where it should be. It's not mounted on because it needs this bit still needs restoring. But that's in there so I can turn it on. The that I showed you in another video, the clock cluster and everything is on. Um, it's only a few bolts through there as you can see there. It's just so I could connect all the wires up um, so everything will hopefully run on most of it. Um, bodged up some fuel line to it. This is genuinely guys the first time that I have tried to start this bike since I've had it and I've had it nearly five years now I was looking back I've had it nearly five years not only have I nearly had it five years as I said in my very first video it's been like 28 knocking on 30 years since this bike was actually taken apart so it has never been this complete in 30, well, 28 30 years so I'll show you here I'll show proof to you that it's cold my hands are all over that exhaust pipe so you can see it's freezing cold everything's stone cold on it so I turn the ignition on there we go guys that's the first time those lights have been lit for a long time Honestly, I'm excited. Here it goes. cylinder so that's that's not a brilliant start is it but hey it half works pint glass half full half empty whichever one of those people you are it half works so that, that's, that's a bonus at least it did fire up that is when I actually flipped the kill switch because uh, yeah you probably all saw that I forgot to that I forgot to flip the kill switch on so yeah anyway uh, we'll skip over that bit pretend that never happened uh, like I say it runs on one cylinder it runs on the rear cylinder um, did a little bit of testing off camera because it was boring for you guys to be honest I forgot with all the excitement I forgot the cameras over there the battery died as usual need to get another battery sorted for the camera as well so I will do that um, did a little bit of messing around on it it was doing some weird and wonderful things uh, the you could hear one of the spark plugs I'm presuming on it was on the cylinder that was actually working um, it was the CDI units, it runs off two CDI units, one for each cylinder and it was obviously telling it to fire the plug, the spark plug all the time because you could continuously hear the spark plug firing. Um, as well as that, what it then started to do was after I turned it off, which you, you wouldn't have heard on the camera, the oil pump solenoid started firing uh, randomly, uh, it started doing that and then the RC valve motor that winds the cables backwards and forwards to open the valve. Um, that just started randomly going back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. Like it, none of it knew what it was doing. That's controlled off a control unit that's under the back seat. Uh, so that, that, that's what runs that. So yeah, the, the, there was all sorts of weird and wonderful things going on with the electrics. I was dubious whether the ignition switch, because uh, it looked a bit iffy, because that's not restored yet. Uh, that looked a bit iffy but gave that a little bit of a clean up um, some contact cleaner and some grease and stuff uh, 
I just went through a lot of little bits and pieces. I ain't gone through the usual stuff, unplugging everything, replugging it back in, checking all my connections. I've pinned it down to, it is a fault with the CDI units. Uh, we swapped the CDI around, um, plugged them in the other way around because you can put one on one side and one on the other. And it basically moved the problem to the other cylinder. Um, even though it's not working correctly even on the one cylinder, but it would make one cylinder run. Uh, so I'm gonna, that's, that's something I'm gonna have to look into a bit more. I've looked into it, it seems to be quite a big problem with these CDI units, suffering from dry joints. Problem is, is, is anyone watching this, you probably already have seen, or possibly, the, the circuit board's put into a plastic tub, plastic box, then filled with resin, so there's no way of getting in. I've seen videos now of guys where they cut the back of the box off to gain access to the back of the circuit board and they, they seem to suffer from a lot of dry joints. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed, I'll show that in a video, I'll chop the back of the box off, uh, they're, they're not working anyway so I've got nothing to lose and these things aren't exactly sort of like sat around at your local bike store to go and buy a new one. So I'm going to cut the back off and see what we find, hopefully we can fix them. Um, that I'll do in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm sorry guys I wasn't at the video as well last week I've got to say. Um, I was a bit busy with work and stuff and also I got the radiator back so I knew I was going to get this video done to try and start it. Um, so yeah, the rid, as you can see the radiator's in, all the correct uh, clamps are on and everything like that. Some people stick Jubilee clips on there but it shouldn't have a Jubilee clip. Um, it should actually have that style clip. Um, so they're all, all the correct ones are on. Like I said earlier on, it's got coolant in it, it's got gearbox oil in it. I'm ready to go really, but... So that's as, that's as far as I can go with it up to now, as far as trying to get it to run. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna cut the CDI open and see what we get, and fingers crossed. There are some CDI units available in China, I've found, um, by a company, LXD. Uh, there's, two, there's two companies actually that make them. Uh, maybe you guys can give me uh, some help on this one if you've ever used any of them. One's an unbranded Chinese make, which it actually tells you that the boxes are different to the original size, it won't fit in the holder, that the, so they're right off straight away. There are another company that use like a red label, Lexinande or something, Lexinande or LXD or something like that, it's a red label. They seem to supply, I've, the more I've done some research, their, their CDI units seem to be sold in quite a few places. Obviously the MC16 one's an oddball, so again, no one's got any in stock. Um, but I've, I've seen a few bad things about Chinese CDIs that only buy Chinese if you want to melt your pistons and all, all the usual sort of stuff. How true it is, I have no idea. I've never used a Chinese CDI. You'd like to think that technology's moved on and they know what they're doing now. They're pretty clever with most things, so I don't know. I'll leave that one to you guys, maybe one of you guys has used one, um, bought one for your bikes, or know someone that has, if you do, uh, please let me know, please leave me a comment. Um, talking of comments, um, something else I've been meaning to say for the last few videos, I'd just like to say a big thank you to everyone that's left me a comment, um, it's all been very nice comments, very positive, and I'm glad that you all like what I'm doing, so thank you very much, keep them coming. Um, and yeah, going back to this. For now, I'm just going to carry on. I'll, like I said, I'll cut the box open and show that in a video. But I'm just going to carry on. There's so many little fiddly jobs to do. It's not like I've got nothing to do. So I'm going to carry on doing the little fiddly jobs. Um, the foot peg at the other side, what's fastening on with the right washers, and uh, what else have we got to do? Um, there's all sorts of little bits. I need to source some handlebar ends, the correct ones. I might end up having to make some because I can't even find any old knackered ones. I might have to make some of them on the lathe. Um, yeah, so it, it's getting there. Um, what I'm going to do on the next video, I'm going to start restoring the clock cluster. Uh, I'm going to get that stripped down, um, get the metal frame blasted, get that painted gloss black again. I'm just looking at it, it's over there. I'll, sh I'll show you it actually. So there we go, there's the clock cluster. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get on and I'm going to restore, start strip, sorry, start, well restore it, yes, I'm going to restore it. I'm going to strip this down in the next video and start working my way through fixing all this up and getting this all looking, looking nice and uh, in suitable condition to go back on the bike.
and then that's another job done so yeah as you can see guys radiators in there nicely it's a bit dark in here it's in there like I say I'm wobbling the camera but proper clip there I did that as well um, plated that and the bleed no ignore this this was just some uh, dodgy pipe I fastened on the other day to try and make you know fuel line I actually found the correct one I've been looking on the internet for the one that comes off at a right angle on the end of the carbs sorry down you can see can you see it down there but I've actually found the right one in my loft of all places so yeah that's 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 it so far, um, I'll get on with that in the next video so you guys can uh, watch me start to strip that down and we'll figure out what we're going to do with that and how we're going to restore that. So yeah that's it guys, please leave a comment, um, please like the video if you like it of course and uh, most importantly please hit the notification bell and please subscribe. See you in the next video guys.